Aloha and good afternoon. My name is Jürgen Steinmetz, joining you from the Breaking News Show. I'm in Honolulu at the Alamoana Shopping Center right now after having a coffee at the Coffee Bean here at Foodland. With me in College Station, Texas, is Dr. Peter Tallow. Welcome, Peter. Well, the day started out very windy. Um, it was warm, but boy, was it windy, like 30 miles an hour wind, about 48 kilometers an hour wind. But then about midday, it was so windy that I thought I would be blown over while walking. And then about midday, the wind went wherever it went and uh, became a beautiful day uh, with temperatures in the 80s and blue skies. So I guess we have incredibly pure air today because when you have wind, that, that much wind, it probably blew everything to New York or to the Atlantic Ocean or wherever it went, but it's not here anymore. Yeah, and that in, in Hawaii, these winds are known actually as trade winds. We have them all the time. Uh, winds are quite, but if you keep our air clean, because here we don't have to blow it to New York, we can just blow it in the ocean. And there's two and a half thousand miles of, uh, between us and the, the U.S. mainland. So it has plenty of room to escape, I guess. Yeah, well, and it can always go to California. They won't notice the difference. So that's, I mean, it's two and a half thousand miles away. So yeah, no, it, 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 no, 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 yeah. stuff does travel. We do know that stuff travels across the Pacific and it travels across the Atlantic. So um, you might be just adding a little bit to California's uh, pollution, but they have so much pollution. I don't think they'll know the difference. So it won't matter. So it's okay. Better, at least you'll have a nice, clean Hawaii. On the other hand, you could be impacted by stuff going on in China. So um, it, it actually, it's amazing how far wind will carry um, pollutants and other issues. Yeah, and talking about China, of course, Shanghai uh, has a major issue at hand to the city is pretty much under lockdown because of COVID yeah. again. Um, even though if you really look at the numbers, Peter, the numbers are not any higher than most cities in the United States. And yeah. I heard Philadelphia might be putting restrictions back on. Yes. Other than that, uh, you can see us here in Hawaii, we don't really wear masks anymore, so it looks yeah. like everything is normal. As you well know, there was a major study that was released today, and um, one of the things the study showed is there was absolutely no difference. It's in the United States, and they factored in diabetes, age, etc. So it was a much more sophisticated uh, uh, statistical study. In New York, New Jersey, and California came out worse than Florida and Texas. And it was interesting, the states which had less mass did better. So one of the, and one of the, and we know the Johns Hopkins study, which is of course the major mega study, showed that the lockdowns don't work. So one of the things that's incredible about um, what's going on in China is they have really very few cases, but they have a zero tolerance case. So they're going to save people from this, but they're gonna have thousands of people who could die of starvation, could die of frustration, could die of suicide. And I always like to put out to people, if you're dead, you're dead. It doesn't matter if you're killed by diabetes or COVID, or if you're killed by starvation or COVID, you're still dead. Or suicide, you're still dead. And of course, today we know we're not in 2020. We're two years later, we have so much more data, and we know the mess didn't work. It's Philadelphia, which is a city of, what, 1.7 million people, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they had two cases, and they were going back from mass for two cases. And yet how much in, in New York, which allows athletes and uh, actors, et cetera, not to be wearing masks, is having little children be masked, which are the least vulnerable. And you really wonder, what is wrong with these politicians? They're, they're, you know, or, or do they have something yeah, wrong? But, uh, uh, but Peter, these are CDC uh, studies and other studies too. Maps do help. I can disagree with you. No, actually, the, the, the maps we probably studies, wouldn't be far yet. No, the newest CDC studies have shown they really don't that much. They, we believe they did. And as you know, of course, Dr. Fauci today said, well, actually, you should just do whatever makes you feel comfortable, um, which is kind of interesting. So that he's taken a, a new position. I think it's a good position. I actually agree with Dr. Fauci in the sense that. People have to make their own levels of risk, but the, the mask probably will help you from not getting a cold or maybe some other issues, but I'm speaking specifically of COVID and they really have not had much effect, if any. And then probably the damage we've done to children, which is incredible. 
the inability to learn to speak, the inability to develop facial recognition well outweighs the minimal, if there's any, uh, that we've done for, um, uh, for the masking. So I think, I think in 100 years or 50 years, people will look at us and say, what were they thinking? This, these people were as crazy as in the um, dark ages in the middle ages. And we don't want to believe that, but we really have gone to almost anti-science. And, and the mask has now become a religious symbol rather than a medical uh, instrument. What well, other... but it also became a symbol of, of political divide, unfortunately. Yes, it did. And it shouldn't and be. The mask appeared, uh, it, it is really a process we will come forget. When or you, you are 100% right. It has become a symbol uh, of. With this. Yeah, yeah but Peter, when this all started, um, we didn't uh, have a vaccine. Yes, you're right. So you're I agree right. more. But when it's all started, the mask was our only protection. And you're it absolutely necessary. right. But we're and not yeah. in 2020 anymore. This is not March. Exactly. Of and we have much more data now. We know the damage that's done and we know the good. Now, I'm not blaming anybody in March of 2020. It's just like Europeans in the 15th century thought that you know strange things would come from wells and other stuff. And um, they didn't believe that you should, that they thought that bathing would make you sick uh, versus boiling the water. Eventually they figured it out. But once you know it, then you've got to live with the science. We can't live with, you know, a political, I'm better than you. And I think that the other side of this crazy world we're living in, and I know you're going to speak a little bit about this, it's what's going on in Europe and in uh, uh, going on in Ukraine. Um, and the whole concept, one of the things that came out today, and I looked it up to check on it, the ruble today is worth more than before the Russian invasion. So the sanction... Well, and, and you see the world is divided in this, Peter. Yes. Um, maybe before we go further, I want to play a video. Um, and of course, this is a proper, it looks like a propaganda video from the Russian side, but it's interesting to listen to. We can talk a little bit about it. I do want so to emphasize, stay tuned for a minute here. I, stay tuned you for say, a I want to emphasize my friend uh, Thomas Steinmetz is not a Russian sympathizer. And he's showing this for purposes of news. And he is not in any way trying to uh, create Russian propaganda. So I want to defend him before anybody attacks him. Just. Самолет, ёпта. Жесть. Hello, Americans. Uh, this is Natasha from Russia. And we want to thank you for all your sanctions, for taking away from our country Coca-Cola, KFC, McDonald's, and all that shit. We understand that you take care of our healthiness, healthiness, health, healthiness. А блять, а как, блять? Healthy, and uh, that's why we will we'll be stronger and more beautiful and without fat. So, we take care of you too, and that's why we cut our gas. So, you have to walk by foot instead of using your cars. Don't thank you. Don't, don't say thank you. Uh, friendship. I am so sorry. I have to go to feed my bear and drink vodka and play balalaika right now. Uh, see you later from Russia with love. But that, of course, plays into the travel and tourism industry heavily because of the sanctions, Peter. Um, yes. Uh, what what this lady just told us, the sanction may not be working. You said the ruble is high. The sanctions are not working because many countries are on the Russian side. There are 22 countries and we listed them, including China, including India, including Ethiopia, 
that are on the side of Russia. And then you have countries that are in between and don't want to say anything, like uh, the UAE, uh, the Saudi Arabia. And these are countries that keep you uh, that keeping the connection open to Russia. The sanctions in the hotel and tourism industry are definitely not working because all the hotels in Russia, American hotels like Marriott, Hyatt are open. Yes, Marriott uh, donated one million dollars to the cause in Ukraine, but they're making the money on the Russian side because prices right. in the hotels are expensive. You can check it. Airfares in and out of Moscow and elsewhere are astronomically, and the flight are booked. Turkish Airlines is making a bundle on this, so does Etihad, Emirates, and Qatar Airways. So yes, the sanctions are definitely flawed. And so one of the big problems is if you have sanctions that are not being universally applied, they don't work. And we have a perfect example of that, and that's Cuba. The United States has had sanctions on Cuba for over 60 years, and nothing happened. The only thing that happened was we heard the Cuban people, and we heard Americans of Cuban descent living in uh, the United States. Now we're discovering that gas prices are going up, all sorts of food prices are going up in the United States, and we're told that's because of the sanctions. And if that's true, we really have to wonder who's making money? What's going on? Because if the goal was to stop people from being murdered in Ukraine or being killed or to stop a war, it failed. And I think that's the only way to look at it. The sanctions, by the way, historically, sanctions have never worked, ever. So that why we would leave, you know, uh, Einstein said that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And why we would have believed that um, doing the same thing over and over again and getting a different result, we would get a different result, means we're the insane. Um, Putin's popularity is rising in China because of national, in, in Russia because of nationalism. So far, we've created a boomerang effect. And I feel terrible for the people of Ukraine because we let them down. And the bottom line is they gave up their nuclear arms, and I support Ukraine. They gave up their nuclear arms in 1994 under the guarantee that Western Europe and the United States would never let them be invaded. And we didn't, in the sense, lift the finger. Nobody wants, we will send them some arms, some money, and lots of tears. But, what they, but the deal was that we would be there to make sure. Um, that was a bad deal for Ukraine, because if Ukraine had had atomic weapons, they might not be in the situation they are today. And I think other countries around the world are going to have a lot of questions, should you ever trust international guarantees? And that means it's going to make peace harder than ever. And that's going to hurt tourism. That's going to hurt economies. And I think, you know, the, the, and we're now saying this war may last for months or for years. And if so, wow. What are we doing to ourselves and what are we doing in Europe and what are we doing to the poor people of Ukraine and yet the poor people of Russia also because the average Russian citizen, he has no uh, choice. And we knew from the beginning China said it would support Russia and the Chinese economy is the second largest economy in the world. And by the way, China has now quadrupled its military spending and wants to make itself so strong that the United States would be afraid to defend Taiwan. So um, I would not be shocked if we don't see with it, by the end of this year, another war in the Pacific. And that will throw tourism into a complete city. Uh, from one side, up and down, from Japan and Korea, all the way down to Australia, should there be a war in the Pacific. Those are scary times. Really. Well, let's, let's not uh, a scenario no, it's not a doomsday. I think it's a doomsday. I think it's a doomsday. But you know, we feel for the people in the and, and, and Peter, we started a screen or travel a campaign to, together with Ivan. It's not actually um, suffering in, in Ukraine, um, trying to stay alive with his two sons in um, Odessa. So we wish him well. Yes, and, and I believe there's been bombing of the tourism industry. Um, there have been some explosions. Apparently, it hasn't come to any high depth like in other yeah. cities. 
the way, unfortunately. Let's let's hope it's not coming to this, but oh. all indications are there. You know, that thing is that truly is coming and you know, if it were destroyed, it would be truly um, so, really a you know, priceless gem that the world would have lost forever. Because you can't rebuild back what the historical cities. They're they're gone. Absolutely. Well, if the, if anyone wants to know how to assist um, Ukraine and what the tourism industry is doing, go to our dedicated website, screen.travel, like screaming out your travel, and you will find out more. Uh, we, we are at the World Tourism Network, a proud tradition in this campaign with an MOU uh, and create most travel and tourism organizations over there. Um, other than a little bit uh, more on the positive, to uh, watch some scenery from before we go and talk to Nathan from Star the booming industry in Florida and this region. Here, uh, we'll see it uh, again in a couple of days. Um, if you wanted to watch this, Oh, and any other breaking news to breakingnewsshow.com and to find all our events lined up and uh, you can listen to it again. If you watch us on two of our news or new channel, you can also find us. Well, let's go to Malta. Thank okay. you, Peter. Stay safe and stay healthy. Bye bye. Hello, and we're back again now after you heard a little bit about the island of Malta, and we'd like to welcome Nate um, in Sarasota, Florida. And uh, Nate will tell us a little bit more about his region in Florida. And as you all know, Florida is booming right now when it comes to travel and tourism. We in the United States are quite uh, fortunate that uh, COVID is out of the picture for many destinations, and I think Sarasota is one of them. How's everything, Nathan? Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's uh, it's great. Yes. Once again, my, I'm Nate Sweetman. I am the communications and public relations coordinator with Visit Sarasota County, uh, the county's tourism bureau. And uh, yeah, it hasn't slowed down even with the uh, the you know the slight change in in, uh, in us getting to what we like to call back to normalcy. Um, it, we've been very uh, grateful for the amount of visitation and just the fact of people understanding the area and, and knowing Sarasota wanting to come visit. So it's been great. Uh, but Sarasota County uh, reaches over 725 square miles, um, including many in various communities within, outside of just the city of Sarasota. We have Siesta Key, Lido Key, St. Armand's, Venice, Northport, uh, just to name some. And we also carry six barrier islands uh, along the Gulf Coast. Um, with tons of beaches and, and fun activities to do out there near the water, uh, just to say. But uh, other than that, we really like to classify ourselves as a cultural coast, um, especially when we, we get into explaining to different markets, various markets that might not know Sarasota County. Um, we're very big into the arts and culture. We have a rich history uh, when it comes to the circus arts. Uh, the circus actually began uh, over a century ago here within the, uh, within the county of uh, Sarasota and by uh, the Ringling Brothers. And um, it ended up transforming how we, uh, we uh, shape our, our county and our, and our district and really showing, showcasing how uh, the circus arts kind of help uh, collaborate with creating this, this fun county and, and then an arts perspective. So uh, that's a really fun thing to do. And then we also have various attractions, fun restaurants to go eat at all over the county uh, scattered throughout. Where are your visitors coming from? Are mostly domestic visitors from the New York area? Or I know um, Florida has been quite popular among Germans, and we have a lot of German um, listeners and viewers. Mm -hmm. um, where do people come from? Yeah, so it, that's a great question. We, we typically target the Northeast market. Like you said, a lot of, we get a lot of the snowbirds, especially during what we classify as our peak season. Um, those winter months uh, up north, getting a lot of people visitors there. But 
one thing I, I did notice a trend was throughout last year outside of those peak season months was just a lot of domestic in-state travel. We found a lot of people visiting were from the state of Florida, uh, just taking, you know, hopping in their car, driving to, uh, down this way for a few, a few hours or a few days, or even just someone coming across for a week, knowing they have that time and just hopping in their car, driving, you know, four or five hours and staying here within the county. So we do see a lot of in-state domestic travel. Um, but you spoke on that German market, and it was so great that last December, they finally started to open up the international market uh, traveling uh, restrictions and, and kind of pulling those back and giving our international markets a chance to come visit Florida. And uh, yeah, so far, so good. We've had a lot of German visitors. I've actually had the pleasure of working on multiple FAMs, which we classify as a familiarization trip, and uh, a lot of FAMs that include uh, uh, writers and media from that German, uh, German market. Now, many destinations in the world these days are looking for more quality travelers and less quantity. I know we've been quite big here in Hawaii. Uh, Barbados, I understand, is uh, going the same direction. Uh, the Seychelles is going this direction. Um, how is the conception on, on, on this in um, Florida or in your region? Yeah, it's, um, it's, 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 quite, it's quite different and the same within different parameters. Um, we, we see that a lot of the travel we're getting is uh, more catered to people kind of wanting to check out various things and us giving those, those markets and those people the opportunity to explore various, uh, various fun activities and, and, and things that make us unique as a county. Um, one thing I, I truly love is putting together different trips for media members that might come through and someone might already have an idea of what they would like to do. Um, and some have different objectives and different things and angles that they're trying to get at. So we, we, be able, we have an opportunity here within this county to be able to supplement that for, for all walks of life. And uh, it's really nice knowing that we have the versatility that we do here within the county. And where would you fly? Uh, would you fly to Tampa and since you're close to Tampa or you have your own airport uh, or air link, I guess? Yeah, we have our own airport, the Sarasota Bradenton International Airport, also known as SRQ. We have it right here in the county. Um, right before it breaks that Bradenton Sarasota line that way we also get a lot of Bradenton visitors but that airport did see we set a new benchmark from August 2020 to July 2021 we saw more than 2.7 million visitors throughout that time uh, frame come in and out of SRQ airport so we we set new benchmarks with that number and we just saw a lot of travel especially um, through the pandemic trying to get through people trying to at least find ways to still get outside uh, as safely as possible and and luckily enough, we had a lot of visitation through this SRQ airport. So both major airlines are uh, flying to SRQ? Uh, yeah, we have a bevy. Uh, we have Southwest is, a, is there, uh, Delta is there, uh, a new airline that just uh, started, I believe it's um, Avalo or Avalo, I might be pronouncing it incorrectly, but that's a new premier one that just signed up and we're getting a lot of locations now. Um, we just had a couple just recently added, um, especially from the Northeast uh, market, so. Wonderful. And if anyone wanted to get more information about your county, where would they go? Please visit uh, visitsarasota.com. <laughs> no pun intended, but the actual link is visitsarasota.com. Uh, you can find any and every information about us, whether it be the places to stay, you're looking for hotel uh, recommendations, best dining spots, um, even if you want an entire press kit, that kind of gives general information about the area and all the versatile versatile things we have going on here within the communities. Um, but yeah, definitely check out visitsarasota.com. Thank you very much, Nate. And for everyone else, uh, we're coming to a close for our uh, breaking news edition today on April 11th. And um, if you wanted to listen and watch this and any of our other editions, just click on our um, event link or YouTube link, or you can go to breakingnewsshow.com and um, you find wh who else we've been talking to and we hope we get Nate back very soon. And um, again, if you wanted to go to Florida, there's no better time to do this now. Thank you, thank you very much, Nate. And uh, we hope Absolutely. you see you again very soon. Sounds good, thank you.